That's better. Only took three goes. Wait. Tell ya, it's tough to work under these conditions. Kobe Bryant. Mate, how are you, buddy? How's heaven? Hey, MW, how are you, bud? All right, let's chuck that down there. That's going to over a second but we'll be out of here before then right this is good we can get the other battery pack sorted all right famo how are you hey terry oh 220 am oh, naughty playing up again aren't you all right, welcome everyone. All right. Hey, Kobe, does Shaq know that you've got that username, mate? All right. All right, that's there, good. Welcome everyone. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, Stinky Pinky, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream, bud. Welcome crew, my name's Jim, this is Australis TV. Big shout out to our sponsors, Millard Marine, Qualia Fishing Reels and also Rode Microphones. If, yeah, good MW. If you're serious about your streaming, get serious about your audio, okay? And if you wanna do that, get Rode Microphones. Since we've had Rode Microphones sponsor us with the product, our audio on the streams has gone to another level, okay? So as you're well aware, two days in a row, we've lost that big brim from this stretch of river, all right? So, yeah, can't sleep. Need to get it, okay? And, uh, yeah, we just need to sort it, you know? And, um, yeah, can't sleep. Need to catch this brim, but anyway. Now, the other thing is too, fam, what I did today is um, I went into a local store, Whitey's Tackle, in uh, Treendale, okay? Me personally, being in Bunbury, I uh, support Whitey's and Sports Marine for fishing tackle, okay? So uh, with that, always buy local, all right? And what I did is I managed to buy a um, chair that can hold my weight. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a different perspective today from other fishing streams. What we're going to do is we're going to set this up so it zooms in just past my shoulder level, right? We're going to put the chair here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you this stretch of river and we're gonna fish this stretch of river. We're probably gonna be better here out in the shade, right? And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna plonk the chair down here and what we're gonna do, okay, is we're just gonna cast a bait out, right? And just leave it for the brim like we did yesterday. And then what we're gonna do today, fam, is I'm gonna do a lesson in soft plastics for you, okay? Now, with soft plastics, uh, <laughs> I'm that old, I can remember when soft plastics came out on the old jig heads and that sort of stuff in the early days with the scroungers and that sort of thing. Now, nowadays, everybody fishes with them. They catch everything from Samson fish to kingfish to trout to redfin perch and everything in between, you know? So in America with the bass and all that sort of stuff, you know what I'm saying? They just uh, absolutely go off the charts, really. And the good thing about them is with soft plastics, not so much in the deep sea ones, but a lot of the smaller ones are still relatively, um, thank you, Stinky Pinky, and I really appreciate everybody giving up their time to come in today, okay? Now, your best friend in summer in Australia is a stick, because that way you can beat the snakes off with it, okay? But remember, you only get one chance. But your other friend is Aerogard, because without Aerogard, you end up looking like a flopping pincushion. And at my size, not good. Back in a second. Right. I'm 
<sighs> okay. There we go. Now, bit of friendly advice, right? If you're going to use the AeroGuard, don't put your finger over the nozzle, okay? Just a light spray. Oh, is that over the screen? Light spray like that. Okay, bowling ball. There we go. Just over the legs. Oh, lovely. And that way, you don't end up getting Ross River. And when you're my size, you get the river, the ocean, the sea, everything. Right, so we've done that now. That'll keep us going for a while. Now, we're going to be using a couple of um, we're going to be using a couple of different soft plastics today. Okay, so there's a couple of different flavours. Jigsaw, how are you, mate? We have the Z-Man soft plastics. All right. <laughs> Jigsaw, how are you, mate? Yeah, sorry, mate. This uh, stream labs is a bit different. We've got to refrain um, from the um, like uh, symbols and that. So, these are the midnight oil colour from Z-Man. Okay, when you're fishing for brim, and when you're fishing for um, estuary species like flathead and that sort of stuff, okay, um, your dull colours like uh, what would you say um, olives browns and greens these work quite well so as you can see in these color patterns that's um, the midnight oil is virtually like an olive color with a little bit of pumpkin seed through it all right then from there you go to the bloodworm colors right so with the bloodworm colours, they're more of a reddy brown and they have more of a red speck through them, okay? Right, how are you, Manzi? Welcome, bud. From there, we go to these um, Pro Lures, which are done by Pro Lures Australia, okay? Now, these are smaller single tar grubs. So with that, when you've got the... Uh, on the back of the... Um, soft plastic see that little paddle tail right that's what you call a paddle tail okay with these soft plastics they're tapered so what will happen is the water will rush over the front of the soft plastic then it'll start to close in on the back of the tail which will call cause this tail to move which will give it an action in the water all right and then that attracts the fish then you get to take heaps of photos and brag to all your friends right so these are the pro lures We've got a brown pro lure there, and we've got the olive, which is a very, very similar color to this one from the Z-Man, okay? And the other thing is too, um, if you're gonna be fishing for flathead and that sort of stuff, half the time, I don't really think flathead are anywhere nearly as fussy as um, your brim. So you can use these multi-packs. You can get these little multi-packs, greens, pinks, um, fluoros, purples, all sorts of stuff, right? And then that way you can cast them around. And the good thing about that is you can see them when you've got them in the water. Now, in terms of jig heads, right? I went into Whitey's Tackles today. And to my shock, I found a multi-pack of, I think it's about 50 jig heads, right? Done on mustard hooks by a local manufacturer that are absolutely perfect for this sort of fishing. All right, and like I said to you, always shop local, support your local shops, like in Bunbury, for example, Sports Marine and Whitey's Tackle as well in Trendale there. They're involved in the community. They put a lot back into the community and they're a part of the community, unlike the enemy, and we know who that is, so let's not go there, right? And uh, that way, you know, when you uh, support them, they inadvertently support you with knowledge, and a lot of them will fish locally and know people that fish locally as well, okay? And that one little piece of information could end up making the difference between no fish on a trip and bagging out, but we fish catch and release, so it doesn't matter anyway. All right, now. Right, no, that's not it, bugger. Where is it? 
Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's not it either. Don't be deceived, this is a highly organised system, right? That defies logic, as they say. Rightio, so I'm just going to get some tape, right? Hey, Timmy, how are you, bud? I'm coming in to see you tomorrow, buddy. And obviously, fam, if you're in the market for a boat and you're in the Bunbury or the greater region area, go in and see Millard Marine, okay? <laughs> oh, no, don't. Don't start your Lionel Richie. There's no room for Lionel Richie here, okay? I keep telling you, Timmy. Oh, man, I just started sleeping again, okay? And also, a lot of people don't know... We, a lot of people don't know that Millard Marine also do mechanical work. I take my car there exclusively. And from my own personal experience, I made the mistake of going elsewhere. I spent a lot of money on the old Hilux with people that actually didn't do anything. Took it straight down to Millard once I got to know them and all the rest of it. And within 10 minutes, the mechanic there rang me and told me what was wrong with my car. So trust me from my experience. Right, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Jigsaw, how are you, mate? Right, so, the battery pack's on there, and away we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on the tripod, right, and then once we're on the tripod, we're going to start charging this phone and also the receiver. All right, Famo, good work. Oh, I taped the wrong one. You're kidding. Really? Oh, dear. That's all right. We can work this out. Excellent. That's good. And then we'll swap over to the other one. That's probably going to make the phone a bit hot there. Ah, right. We'll figure this out in a second. That's plenty clear enough. Good. Excellent. Oh. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing that jigsaw. Yeah, the old houseboat has its merits, doesn't it? What happened there? Uh, that's the screen. Hang on. Why does YouTube quit? Yes, thank you. Can't all agree on everything? What are we disagreeing on? All right, famo, so what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you a product that I've found that uh, I've been looking for for a while, right? And uh, I finally found one in my size, <laughs> which is a rarity. So, there we go there. Let me just uh, chuck that down here and hope that the heat's not gonna get that. Chuck that in there. Okay. Now, today, I went down to Whitey's Tackle. Right, and I can't even reach that because I'm on the lower level here. And I invested in a chair. Because let's face it, I'm getting old. The body's starting to slow down. The waistline's starting to catch up with the knees. Right. And, uh... Sometimes you need that little bit of luxury, you know what I mean? So what I did is I went down and got myself an Oz... What is it? 
yeah, Oz 10 Gecko chair. Now, um, I don't buy cheap chairs because they very rarely last one trip with me. And as you can see, this is straight out of the box. Right. Okay. And this is that little bit of, whoops, don't do that. Keep rubbish here. This is that little bit of luxury that you need when you're my age. Right. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting this up so that I can fish from it in comfort and then that way when we're waiting for a bite it's a bit easier than destroying the old esky, you know? So the weight limit on these is 150 kilos which is me plus lunch and um, the stuff that's available on the market nowadays, unbelievable, check this out. Ta-da! Lovely. Right, look at that. There you go, size BB for bowling ball, yes. All right, fam, so. <laughs> hey, Glasgow Rebel, how are you, bud? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, it helps stinky, doesn't it? All right, so what we're going to do now, okay, is fishing bait and fishing soft plastics, uh, two different beasts, okay, let me just put this in the shade a bit fam, because that sun's going to cause the phone to cook in a second. Let's go back here a bit, right. And what we can do is zoom in. There we are. Okay, we've still got Wi-Fi. We've still got everything. And what we'll do is I'll show you how to fish these different stretches of river. Right, I'll just get me trusty old hat. Now, in Western Australia, the maximum number of rods that you're allowed to have out or use at any one time is two. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. Normally, I, I cast out the Calcutta 700 with the big bait, but because we're chasing brim, and look, when the river's at high tide and the sun's on this side of the river, we seem to get more fish in closer on this side, but obviously with the sun in its um, setting stage here, in the afternoon as it sets in the west and that sort of stuff. Most of your shades on the other side of the river, okay? And what I want to do is, I'm going to do a long range cast across there and put the rod in that tree stump there like we normally do and let that do its thing. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to work these snags in really close. Now, when you're working with soft plastics, you want to get as close to the snags as possible, right, without hitting them. And remember, you don't have the luxury of knowing what you can see under the water. So, for example, if you can see a stick sticking out of the water, you know that it's joined to a tree that's pointing at it on the bank that's submerged, and vice versa. So over here where we've had these two trees that have fallen over and that sort of stuff, First cast is a nice little short range cast in between this grass tree here and that little snag. Nice short range cast just in there, bring it back, cast out again. And every time you cast, what you try and do is you try and cast two centimeters to the right of where you've cast before, because you'll never hit it, right? But at least close enough is good enough. And then what you do, work every single centimetre of the snag, okay? Try and just follow the shape of the snag. Now, if you've got here, I don't know whether you can see it on the phone, we've got a snag coming out from this tree here, then a gap, then another one. To try and cast over that and catch a fish is pointless. Even if you catch the fish, you're going to lose it on the snag anyway, right? So what we'll do then is, we'll cast out... We'll cast to where that snag is, and then we'll do long range casts out into the middle of the river. 
and then we'll just work our way around covering every single square centimetre of river. Now you don't know where the snags are in the river, you don't know where the fish are in the river. So what you've got to do is you've got to fish every single um, square centimetre of it. And the other thing is too, soft plastics, retrieve them as slowly as possible so that the uh, soft plastic tail is working. Slower the better, okay? Sometimes in rapids and fast flowing water it's okay, but in these sorts of conditions, you know, the whole bump, bump, bump and all that, just bring them in nice and slowly, you know, lift your rod up slowly, drop your rod tip, and then let the soft plastic do all the work. So in an area like this, it'd probably take us 15 to 20 minutes to work every single square centimetre of it, if you know what I'm saying. And that's when you just get better fishing results than going in blind, you know. <laughs> what was that? Your river is big? Oh yeah, probably, mate. We don't have very big rivers here. So, what we'll do first, okay, is we'll just get a bait out and we'll get that in the water and get that set up and then we'll cast soft plastics around it. It's always catch 22 when you fish with bait because, you know, me personally, um, when I fish with bait, I like to cast it out and not touch it at all. And normally, you know, if you're fishing away, you're holding the fishing rod, you'll chat to someone, you'll move the bait. You'll chat to someone else, you'll move the bait and all that sort of stuff. And then what you do from there is you'll always move it. And I've always had better results just casting it out and leaving it, fam, okay? Now, let's just get our bait out. George, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Firstly, though, what I'm going to do, just a little bit of ground baiting here. Right, I'm just going to chuck out a few small pieces of muley, which is the bait that we're going to use. What they'll do, while they're frozen, they'll float, and then hopefully that sort of brings in the fish towards us, you know. Did something hit that? Right. Hmm. Two days ago, we lost that big brim in here. Then yesterday, we lost it here, so we'll see what's happening, eh? All right. Nice. We'll chuck that there. That's going to be my... Uh, rod holder as well let's just defrost this for a second and you never know we might even get a mulloway that comes up although i normally catch mulloway on high tide i don't really get them on low tide Okay, so I'm just going to cut that tail off. Right, I'm going to give this a little bit more ground bait. Okay, and remember you want the fish to come to you, you don't want them to go anywhere else. So don't chuck them too far away. A lot of people that go marining make that mistake as well. They'll go down to catch marin, they'll get a heap of pellets and throw them out in the water as far as they can. Don't do that. Put a big clump right on the edge of the water and get them to come to you. I'll show you that later on this year when we do a marining stream, okay? So, let's get the bait out and away we go. Jason, how are you, bud? Oh, it just depends, mate. 
depends on the season, you know. You don't go fishing as much in winter, so the answer there is no, but you know, just depends. <laughs> yeah, the old Australian saying, don't go to the raw prawn with me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a short range cast here, just in case that brim is under that snag again. That's absolutely lovely. Right, and then we'll get these soft plastics going. Hey. There we go. Impromptu rod holder. I think. Lovely. All right, that'll do. That can stay there now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to rig up one of these new soft plastic heads I got. And away we go. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Stinky. Now, are we going to be able to cast anything with that? No, we're going to have to go with the smaller G head, but that's all right. We'll use them a little bit later. You're safe over there with the uh, COVID, Jason? Fishing in Bunbury, Western Australia, George. All right, so what we're going to do now, okay, now, with your soft plastics and that sort of stuff, hey, hang on, that's moving, fam. Hang on. Is that wind or fish? I think that's wind. I'll be very surprised if we actually hook anything here. But you know, there's no rules to fishing. All right, let's just do a short range cast under here. Wait. So with that, just bring that on the bottom, Famo. Something's having a look at that bait. I'm a bit shocked there. Right, and what we're doing, we're just bringing this in dead slow along the bottom, okay? And what I'll do is I'll bring the, um, I'll bring the uh, cam down here, and I'll show you how this is working along the bottom, all right? You don't need to go super quick with soft plastics. You just want them to be able to go fast enough so the tail's moving and straight along the bottom, all right? Let me just have another little cast, and then we'll shift this out. It looked like something was having a nibble of that. Okay, so that's going to come in on the bottom. Just going to bring it in very slowly. See how I'm not even winding too quickly? You want it just fast enough to go just above the bottom though so it doesn't get snagged like that. Come on. Right, and when you're fishing in clear water, you'll often see fish do follows, which can be a bit nerve-wracking, you know what I mean? So I'll just start winding that just nice and slowly. I'm going to keep this rod tip up because I want it to just stay off the bottom. This is a pretty silty bottom here covered in leaves. All right. If you drop your rod tip, the lure will just stay right on the bottom. All right. We'll just let that work a bit more. And then when I cast that out of here, We'll work this other side. Nice and slowly, let the lure do the work. As long as it's moving slowly, that paddle tail will wiggle. Right, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in a second. Okay, a lot of people think that you have to um, retrieve this really quickly to get the tail to work on the soft plastic. You don't. You'll be amazed as to how slow you can retrieve it for the tail to be going flat out, you know? All right. Locked down. Yeah, okay. Bugger, yeah, lockdowns are not good for anyone, mate. We had a five-day regional lockdown and we went just, oh, we went about feral, I think. 
Righty, I don't think there's anything on this side. We'll shift it over. So what we'll do is, we'll just bring this down here for a second, right? Like this. And I'll show you how these soft plastics work because there's a lot of uh, misinformation about the soft plastics. Right, so just have a look in the shallows here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cast this out. Right, so a lot of people think that with soft plastics, you've got to cast them out, right, and you've got to retrieve them really quick like this to get the tail to work. You don't. Okay, so I'm just going to cast this out just out of view of the phone. Right, like this. And this is how slow you can retrieve them to get the tail to work. Watch. I'm not even... Oh, that's on the bottom. Get out of there. I'm not even really winding that that quick. See? See how the tail's going flat out? That's hit the surface there, so it's stopped. But we'll go again. Right. Like that. I've had a long leader on this because I lost a fair bit of braid. I'm not even retrieving this that quickly. Okay, and lifting the rod tip. This is being retrieved quite slow. And see how it's just hugging the bottom? And look how fast that tail's going and it's sending off all the uh, light and that sort of stuff. All right, we'll do that again. Okay. So you can see, I don't know whether you can see the reel. I'm not actually winding this too quick. I've got my rod tip nearly vertical and it's coming in really slowly. But this is all you need for the soft plastics to work. So look at that, coming in on the bottom nice and slow. Look how nice that tail's working, right? And it's basics. The longer you leave your soft plastic in the water, the more chance you have oops, of catching a fish. That was a terrible cast. That was nowhere near where I last cast. All right, let me just bring that in. All right, so I'll get that off the bottom. Just going to bring this in really slowly. That's all you need to do. Right, if you want to lift it up out of the water, you lift your rod tip. If you want to drop it on the bottom, you drop your rod tip. It'll come in straight on the bottom. But this is a fairly heavy little soft plastic. I think it's about a half ounce. There you go, that's coming through the water. See the nice action? Look how that's wiggling. That's all you want it to do, fam. Right, so let's go out straight again. Right. So see that? I'll bring this behind here. Just watch it. You don't... You don't, need to, um, you don't need to wind it too quickly. So look how slow I'm winding the reel. Right. And this soft plastic paddle tail is working. The slower the better. Look. We'll get that off the bottom. See that? That's not coming in too quick at all. But look how much action there is on that tail. See, look. Look at that. That's wiggling beautifully. Right, I mean, you can bring it through quick. But all it does, you, I mean, it's a little bit quicker, but not significantly for all the extra effort that you're putting in. See, look. Right. See, this is not quick, as, quick at all. Right, and that's, that's working fine, see? So what we'll do is I'll do another long-range cast. Straight out there, beautiful. Right. Reel down here, and you can see for yourself, okay, they were just winding that quite slowly. I mean, you can give it a couple of little bumps if you want. Okay, oops, that's on the bottom. And that's coming in beautifully. Look at that tail working. That's all you want it to do, fam. Right, so let's get another good cast out of the way. Right bit further out in the river. Need to get some more braid for this. I've peeled so much off it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cast this bait across the river and then we're going to fish with soft plastics around this snag, okay? I've got to get this phone out of the heat so it doesn't cook, but here we go. That's just coming in. That's how slow I'm winding in the reel. And see the soft plastics? It's You're not retrieving it too quickly at all, okay? You don't want to race the fish with the bait, you know? All right. So what we'll do now, okay, we'll bring this in the shade here, like so. Great. So that's out of the shade of the camera. All right. Let me zoom that back in a bit. There we go. Nice. So what we'll do now... Okay, now that we've got this in the shade, that's a bit better. 
Now that we've got this in the shade, I'm going to cast across the river. Right, if there was a brim there, we would have hit by now. Get out of there. One less snag to hit with the soft plastic. But that's what uh, fish need, fam. They need structure. All right. I don't know whether you can see this, but just across the river there, right, there's a little snag sticking out of the water in the shade right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this around here. That was nowhere near it. But... That's still not a bad cast because we dropped a fish there yesterday. So I'm just going to chuck this over here. All right. Chuck that down there. Right, and leave it. And then what we'll do is get the soft plastic out. Okay. And we'll start fishing on the side here. Don't tell me we've got a fish already. I just cast it out there. It can't be, surely. No. Okay. So, in here we've got this snag. Now, remember with your casting, fam, you can have so many different, every single time you move your rod, that's a different casting position, okay? There's, there's about 60 different angles that you can hold your rod to cast with famo right so this is a tool it's a very valuable tool for your fishing okay so you don't even need to do these big long range casts like this just a little cast in here look boom lovely winding in really slow okay there we go the soft plastics working beautifully and the other thing is too, if you want to cast for accuracy, reduce the dis distance between your soft plastic and your rod tip. Right, so I'm just going to sit here nice and gently. I'm not going to overcast this. Away we go again. Beautiful. Keep that rod tip up to keep that soft plastic off the bottom. Like that. Get that out of there. Great. Now... What we're going to do is cast a bit closer to the snag, but a bit more to the right. Lovely, beautiful. That's working really nice. Now, I'm going to cast a little bit more to the right here. Right. Great, I'm not overcasting or anything like that. Nice and steady. And it's the same old story. you just got to find structure. That's where usually you'll find fish, Emma. Right. So I'm going to give this a bit longer on the old pendulum cast here. There we go. Boom. Straight as a die, fam. Bring that in. And now it's going to get interesting. You've got to remember, too, if you've got... An area where you've got undergrowth and that sort of stuff, you can cast to it. You can use what's known as a bow and arrow cast, see? So what you've got to do with the bow and arrow cast, some spots there, a lot of people, when you've got trees overhanging a waterway, remember, you can hold your fishing rod 60 different ways to do 60 different casts, okay? So if I want to cast underneath overhanging trees, where that point on the hook is, you hold behind it like that so you can't spike yourself, right? And in this case, like that. Then what you do is you load the rod like this and very much like the bow and arrow cast. But remember that your rods are built on the backbone, so you need to point the backbone away from you so it takes this lure away from you. See, look, beautiful, very accurate, very, very beneficial short range cast, fam. Right, and you can cast underneath trees and that sort of stuff, because it'll cast fairly flat. So 
you know don't be don't be limited in how you go about your fishing try different things right so we'll get this again so if i want to cast parallel to this water under a foliage beautiful see and after a while you learn the you know how your rod and reel works so oh, now there was a little bump when you're fishing for flathead and brim, a lot of times in clear water, you'll see them follow your soft plastics. Just do exactly what you're doing. You know what I mean? Stop it if you want to. Give it a little bit of twitch and then just let the fish follow it. And I mean, you can't make them hit, but you know, you can sort of give them the option to, you know what I mean? So another little pendulum cast like this. Boom. Beautiful. Straight away, that's locked in. I'm bringing that in just along the bottom. Nice slow retrieve, not trying to set, you know, a land speed record. Get out of there, we picked up a stick. That's all right. Now, what I'm gonna do is put a bit more effort into this pendulum cast, right? Lovely. Bring that in. Now my next cast, I'm gonna cast overhand, right? And then I'm just going to bring it through here. And I'm going to do a nice little cast about six foot past this snag just on the left. That's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in along the snag. Okay, like that. Just nice and steady. Not going too quick, but I can feel the tail on this soft plastic working. You know what I mean? It's got a nice little wiggle to it as well. Now what we'll do, we'll do a slightly longer cast. Where's that? On that same line though. Right, that's a little bit deeper out there, but because we're doing, I think that's about a half ounce jig head. That's gonna come in along the bottom beautifully. Right, and just enjoy your fishing fam. Don't treat it as a competition. Come down here, work every single square centimeter of the waterway. Now I'm staying in one section obviously because I've got a bait out and we're live streaming. That's lovely, beautiful, see? And what I'm doing, right, is I'm fishing every single square centimetre at this waterway. Now this is coming in a lot closer to this snag. A lot of fish will hang out near snags, right? They'll swim out, hit a bait, or they'll hit a lure and they'll turn straight away and try and go back into the snags. Right. There we go. Right. The other thing is too, when you're moving your fishing rod, you've got control of your lure. So, you know, I can cast like this with an underhand cast i call this a pendulum cast you know like the pendulum like this there nice effortless cast beautiful where you're pointing with the fishing rod is where it normally goes right bring this back in like so but you can do other casts to cast further you need to just increase your line speed it's as simple as casting back and then forwards right so watch this if i start from here and then I cast like that. That's not a bad cast, right? We've got reasonable distance. I'll bring this in. I mean, this is low tide too. I usually do better at high tide. You get the odd fish at low tide. But anyway, when you can go fishing is determined by when you finish work, you know. That's good. Just coming in along the bottom there. Now... I can cast significantly further with a little bit more effort. Watch, I'll just do a back cast and a forward cast, watch. See that? Okay, oops. Ooh. I'll tell you what, this fluorocarbon's not doing it for me. What did I do that for? Come on, mate. Yes. I put a long leader on here because I took off a heap of braid. Right, but um, I've got a really good uh, rolling swivel on there, but it's still not doing the job, is it? 
that's the problem with fluorocarbon too like uh, all monofilaments the same fam doesn't matter how much you spend on it right it is all prone to twisting let me just get this out of here I'm gonna have to go and get some more braid I think let's just get that through there come on or I can swap this reel over with the other reel that has more braid on it come on that's better and this is the expensive stuff too famo so don't think that the cheap lines are the only ones that give you grief there we are that's a bit better Righty, I'll get back to chat in a second and see how slow I'm winding this reel. That's where I've usually done the best on me soft plastics. Every once in a while you do it a bit quicker and that sort of stuff, but you know, when you're starting out. I mean, the other thing is too, you know, you can, there we go. Some people give it a couple of bumps retrieve couple of bumps and all that sort of stuff i don't mind that but i prefer more subtle movements right i don't really like them salt water fair enough if you're out in a boat or fishing from the rocks but in the estuary just very subtle movements see what i mean nothing too drastic or dramatic oh hang on i think we had a little nip then Well, there you go. All right, let me just get the phone. Hey, Corrupt, how are you, bud? What's going on? You keeping well? All right, this is all good. And thanks for giving up your time to come in and watch, fam. 12 viewers, that's awesome. Right, so the receiver's charging, which is good. We've got full Wi-Fi and everything. Excellent. Right. Yeah, good, Nathan. I fish like this in freshwater, and even in freshwater, when you're using freshwater spinners, Famo, you um, retrieve your spinners at a slow enough speed so the blade's turning. Right, sometimes you'll do them a bit quicker, other times you do it a bit slower. Just depends on conditions, you know. There we go, that soft plastic's just coming in beautifully. I'll give this another five or ten casts, then I'll try a different colour. That's exactly where I pointed with the fishing rod, fam. They say, point and shoot. Okay, so you can see that with what we're doing, it's not that quick. I'm retrieving this soft plastic enough with the rod angle like this to bring the soft plastic in just above the bottom. Right, and then what I'll do, I'll just give it a couple of little bumps. Nothing too fl flamboyant, you know what I mean? That's just on the bottom there. Nine times out of your ten, fam, a fish of a lifetime will hit you at your feet. I've lost count of how many, like, six and eight pound brown trout I've lost there, you know. Enough to lose more sleep than this brim that I missed in the two days. Right, that's a really good cast. I'm trying to work my way around to the left here to bring it towards this snag. Right. That's underneath it, beautiful, come on. And with soft plastics too, your hookups are fairly instant, fam. Um, we don't have the population of brim in this river that you have on the east coast or down south further. Uh, last year, uh, no, the year before last, there was a really bad fish kill here that affected a lot of the fish populations. There was runoffs and that sort of stuff from paddocks further upstream that ended downstream. Nice. Soft plastics are pretty good because you can cast them and forget about them. 
they'll usually always land in the correct position because of the weighted head on them. Right. See, I'm not doing anything berserk here. I'm just bringing it in as a nice steady rate. I'm getting that tail to work. And away we go. Now, we don't know what's in this river. Right, so I'm going to start working this section here now with the soft plastic. And let's see if we find any other snags and that sort of stuff, you know. And the reason why we're fishing this spot is the last few days, or probably the last week, we've been coming here, we've usually caught fish. Nice, come on. Steady, steady. And this is a good way to keep yourself occupied when you're fishing, Famo. You know, bait fishing can get a bit boring sometimes. Unless you're sitting there and doing other stuff apart from bait fishing, which I don't do, so. Nice. Clip that tree on the way through. Centimetre perfect, as old Dennis says. I mean, this is the thing. When you're fishing tidal waters like this that are a mixture of fresh and salt, you never know what you're going to catch. It's probably in a little bit too close to the surface. Now, I don't want to get over this line that I've baited. Okay, so we're going out a little bit further now. All right, that's sunk to the bottom. I felt it go thump. This little Qualia reel's got a 4.75 to 1 gear ratio. I've lost count of how many big fish. We caught that 50 centimetre snapper on this reel in the boat with this very outfit, remember? So, no, it was 48, sorry. On our small baits, which was hilarious. Right, let's get a bit closer to that line. Straighten the tree, you idiot. No, she's gone. Come on. Got it off the first one. Lovely. All right, so we got the jig head back. Excellent. Lost the tail though. What I'm going to do now is we're going to try a different soft plastic fan. Hey Lockie, how are you mate? Yeah, it's not too bad. Lockie, what are you doing? Right, I'm going to try one of those smaller jig heads with a single paddle tail. No, not a single paddle tail, just the single scrounger tail as we used to call it, right? What we'll do is we'll put on a brown lure and we'll get a smaller head. Well, that's why, Mike, what you do is you step aside. Usually it goes to the point that your rod's pointing back. So step aside and press it down away from you, and it shouldn't hit you. That's a good way to hurt yourself. All right, Famo, so we've got this smaller jig head on now. Right, like so. What we're going to do is we're going to just put it through here. Like so. Get in there, mate. Get that push through, little grub pattern. Nice. There we go. 
That's not too bad. We're going to go for a brown colour now. This is a little bit more natural. All right. And let's see how this works. And it's good to test out these different soft plastics, fam. So you know how they work in the water. Okay. Obviously, we're not going to cast as far with this one as we are the other one. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. All right. Let me show you the difference between this one and the other one, okay? So what I'm going to do is just keep an eye on this little grub in the water here, and I'll show you exactly how it works. So once again, you don't need to retrieve soft plastics too quickly to get them work, fam. Right, look. All right, like so. So watch this come through the water. I'm winding really slow. And have a look at the difference in the tattle, the tattle, the paddle tail and the flat tail. See? See that? Look at that. I'll show you again. Watch this. See that? We're not really going too quickly either. That's all you want it to do. The good things about soft plastics on these jigs and that sort of stuff is they'll ride hook up so you don't get snagged as much as you do when you ride hook down, see that? Oh, so he does that. Right, you don't get uh, snagged as much as you do when it rides hook down. See, look at that. Beautiful, that's all you want it to do, famo. And I'm not moving that soft plastic at all, too quickly, sorry. Not moving it too quickly at all, see that? Beautiful little silhouette against the bottom there. So let's go back now. Right. Lovely. Okay. That's as far as you need to cast to catch fish, fam. Now we're going to have to fish this one with a different angle on the rod. Because this is half the size of the other jig head, this will come up a lot shallower. So, so these little one percenters that make all the difference, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the fishing rod at about 30 degrees from horizontal. Okay, and that's gonna bring it in just above the bottom because it's such a light little soft plastic. Let's bring that in. Yep, that's sitting mid-water nicely. Right, so we go again. Okay. How fast do you retrieve it? The height of your rod tip, whether you're using braid or monofilament, all contribute to the depth that your um, soft plastic like this is coming through. Okay, now that's caught itself on the tail, which is all right. That happens once in a while. That's a good little grub soft plastic, isn't it? Let's go again. Nice and steady. That's what you want. Got to fish your soft plastics just off the bottom, fam. Right, you don't want to bring them in on the surface too quick. That's what surface poppers are for. Right, cast it out. Let it sink. Okay, bring it in, you know, five to ten centimetres off the bottom. I can actually fish that like that. That's good. Let me just check the angle out. Yeah, I can point this at the bottom now. That's good because it's so light. No, that's good. Beautiful. All right. Now we know that. Good thing about lure fishing, whether it's soft plastics, crankbaits, whatever, right, is while you've got a bait in the water, you can keep busy with your lures, you know. And um, 
Some days you catch more fish on lures than you do baits. As a rule of thumb, you tend to catch more on bait. But, yeah, that's good. Patience, fam. You know, don't treat it as a comp. Don't treat it as a race or anything like that. The other thing is too, remember, right, just sit back, enjoy what you're doing. Beautiful. And you've always got to learn how your equipment works. A lot of people go out and buy a new fishing rod. I know some people that go out and buy a different fishing rod over every week and then they brag about, you know, how many rods and how many reels they've got. That rod that the bait's being used on there is over 30 years old. This one here is, I was lucky, I just went into a tackle store and it's not even a river fishing rod, it's a jig rod that's weighted up to 160 grams. But what they rate it at and what you use it for depends the size of reel, the size of line, what have you. I think this is a great little rod for the river and because it's so fast in its taper, right, I can use braid with it and I am um, out in the... Uh, ocean I can use slightly heavier sinkers and when the fish bite because it's got uh, a very fast taper I can set the hook straight away you know that's swimming beautiful these these have come a long way since the early days man you should see some of the soft plastics I used back in the early days fam all right players how are you bud welcome to the stream ah all right let's see what's happening here now fam Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to cast this over to the left a bit more and stop being so gutless with my cast. Right. Okay, so the bait. No, nothing's looked at that. So what we must have is there must be a snag just in here about six foot to where I just cast. You're kidding, right? <laughs> I need to put on glasses, fam. I couldn't see that. All right, we need to do a new rig. But what I might do is, because this has got the newer braid on it, let's have a look. Excellent. Now, I'm using 14 pound trace for brim today. Now, with that 14-pound trace, the good thing about that is um, you'll still catch the fish of a lifetime, but if you get snagged when you're using 20-pound braid, you'll at least get your sinker and your swivel back, okay? And then all you have to do is replace that much length of your, um, you know, 14-pound uh, leader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this reel over onto the other rod and start casting the lures with this. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually, no, nah, this, no, nah. yeah, I'll put the lures on this rod. That way it swaps, stops me swapping the reels over. Oh, it is, Plez. It's always a good day down here, mate. You know, I've finished my work for the day, so I thought I'd do the right thing, turn the camera on, come down for a fish, you know what I'm saying? It's all relative, mate. It's not looking too good today though, famo. We've, uh, you know, haven't caught a fish yet.
Hang on, fam, I'll just get this in here. All right, there's a... No, that's 50 pound, that's way too heavy. All right, just give me a second. 20 pounds, still too heavy. Where'd that 14 pound go? Actually, that's a good idea. I'll show you how freshwater spinners work too, famo. Right. It's one thing I've never done. I've never caught a brim on a freshwater spinner. Hang on. <laughs> Excuse me. Where'd it go? Yay, 14 pound. Another really good colour that works in rivers and waterways, fam, is a gold lure with a uh, black top like that. This is a copy of a Yozuri. Um, it's a copy of a Yozuri minnow. Some people use these and that exact colour for redfin perch and trout in the rivers. What we'll do is we'll cast this one out ourselves and I'll show you the difference with the hard bodied lures what sort of actions they have and that sort of stuff. I think that will work. It looks fairly similar to a Yozuri, you know. And the good thing about this is, fam, you get to see lures and soft plastics and that live. You know, a lot of people will show you fish they catch on them, but they won't show you the techniques of how to go about it. And I mean, There's not a school that you can go to to uh, you know, learn how to catch fish. It's just trial and error as you go along, fam. So, you know, and the difference between an expert and someone who's starting out is the experts already made their mistakes, you know? So, not that a lot of them like to admit that because they like to think that they're, you know, the best thing since sliced bread. Never too old to learn, fam. Okay. Radio. Let's conceal this hook into the bait and that should get us a fish. I just use very basic knots for fishing, famo. So what this one's gonna be, okay, I'll just bring this through here now. Don't do that, there we go. All right, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Around the line, back through that little loop there, closest to the hook and then back through where you've threaded it. Okay. Form the knot, a little bit of spittle, Never yank on knots, just form them gently because if the tag end sort of slides over the hook eye, you're going to have headaches and that's fine, that's all you need, look at that. Okay, beautiful, nice simple knot, nothing too spectacular about it, you know. All right, now, did you see that over there, fam? I don't know whether you can see that, but just across there, right, I had one eye on the water. I just saw a little V go through the water. Normally that's your dorsal fin on a fish. And because the sun is now going behind the shade, sorry, the tree over there, 
there's more shade over the water, this sort of works in our favour, okay? I always look for shady spots when I, like if you go out to the water and you can see the bottom and it's clear and it's bright and out in the middle there's a little patch where you can't see to the bottom, that's where you cast because nine times out of ten there's a fish in there, you know? Right. Okay, now. Nice little bit of muley on the old tail. Bring that in here. Lovely. So what we're going to do is, we're going to cast over here now, and then we're going to fish with lures over here. So, nope. Let's bring that back. Two different rods with two different actions, fam. <laughs> okay, I can actually see what I'm doing now, which is good. Let's bring that through. Did I do that again? Wow. Hang on. <laughs> Why is that out there? Hang on. That's better. Let's have a look at that hook. Hook's good. That's better. Right, that can go in there. That's our new rod holder there. That's what it's signed up for, it just doesn't know it. So what I've done here, Fambo, is this rod's now here. I've pushed that through a tree stump. The butt of it's in the sand. I've got a straight line here. What this does is it frees me up to fish this area here with lures. Okay, there's a heap of little snags in here, so let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, Stinky. Yeah, unfortunately, respect is one of those things that's uh, missing nowadays, mate, isn't it? Oh, there's the jig in. Whoops. All right, fam, here we go. Now this has some subsonic rattles in it, which are little plastic beads to make a noise. Right, Daz, how are you, mate? Now, with um, crankbaits like this, it's a bit different. See how I've got that snap swivel at the front? Normally you'd fish that with a loop, right? When you cast these, just a little tip. If I cast this and not correct the position of the lure right it'll tangle on itself so i'll give you a little short range demo 
what you got to do is when you cast this right as it goes out it's just above the water grab your spool and it doesn't matter what position the lure is in right when you do that the lure will turn around and it'll face you and it'll have the correct action okay so i'll just show you again watch nice long cast grab your spool boom so it's flicked it around and it's facing you when it lands in the water and then that way now with these you've got various techniques i've actually put my rod tip on the bottom and i'm bringing through this lure quite deep okay if i stop because it's a floating lure it'll float to the surface right here it comes there we go Right, and what these are designed to do, these are just designed to shimmy left to right. I'm going to show you this lure in the sunlight here. Okay, actually that's a suspending lure. I think mainly because of that big snap swivel on it, okay? So let's just go into this um, light here, and I'll show you how these work in comparison to the soft plastics. Right. Let's just get that there, that's the edge there, so just in front of that leaf, good. Right. So this is how you, uh, yeah, this is a, this is more of a uh, crankbait, although it doesn't like float, so it's more of a suspended door. So I'm gonna chuck that in there, right? Look, see, watch this. See how when you retrieve it, it just wiggles left to right and puts the little subsonic sounds out, watch. Okay, once again, just retrieve it at a speed that's uh, slow enough to get it moving, right, but not too fast to put off the fish. See, look at that. Beautiful little action. Just looks like a nice little minnow. Really big brim will hit this lure, right? Really big brim will hit this lure. I don't know about small ones, but I know that uh, there's a Rapala lure like this right that's in a red color let's just see that see how that's coming through look at that beautiful right and that's what these lures do now what i'll do is i'll show you how a little inline spinner works now right inline spinners are a really good way to go fishing in fresh water because they're rel relatively inexpensive to buy compared to other lures and the other thing with that is too, you can even make them yourself. I'm going to do a heap of lure making videos on these once I get my components out of America. Right, so. This is a little fluorescent pink spinner that I use for trout and for uh, redfin perch. Okay, and it's much the same principle. Right, cast it out like so. And you spin it back fast enough so the blade spins. Sees that? That's lovely. That's a homemade one, so they work straight off the bat. See? And what's happening is that blade's spinning around the wire that it's made on. And that sends out a little signal to the fish that they pick up with their lateral line. Then they get really annoyed with it and either hit it as a territorial strike. Or then what they'll do, okay is they'll just eat it because they think it's food and a distressed fish. That's coming back beautifully. Right, now I'm not even, um, I'm not even winding that in that quickly, but because it's been made with good components and a very solid stem wire, see that? See how it spins? Lovely. Now I'm gonna show you another lure technique that I use that I call walking the dog. Right, so if you've got good quality lures, okay, and they work, right? So I'll just show you. This is a little one eighth ounce lure, right? Really good. Now that's a French blade on it. That's a French style blade. I'll show you the difference with those. These work really well in snaggy water because with the American style spoons, with the Colorado spoons and other spoons, they're more perpendicular. And this will be able to get you through um, like the snaggy stuff a lot easier. Now this is not very big. It's only about three centimeters or a bit over an inch long, but it will catch a lot of really big fish. Okay, as I tread in another cow pat, awesome. Uh, there we go. So, now the good thing about these spinners, right, is for a small lure, 
you can cast them an absolute mile. Right, and like I said, I've never caught a brim on one of these. I haven't really fished for brim on these, but we may as well. We haven't caught anything on anything else. Right, not a good cast because it's too far from the first cast. Because this is such a small spinner, I can retrieve it at, whoops, a fairly good rate. Now, I did a mistake there because I overcast that lure. Right, I didn't grab the spool before it landed, but it corrected itself. So, same old story with these. Okay, as with some of your other bib lures, cast it. Just before it grabs, uh, hits the water, grab your spool to straighten it out. Right, rod tip down, bring it in just above the bottom. Was that a brim that just popped up over there? Anyway. Lovely. The other thing is too, fam, when you're fishing, right, be systematic when you're fishing. Next time you watch a fishing streamer, watch how they fish, right? If they come in here and have a cast there, then a cast here, and then like a cast there, ah, there's nothing here, and they walk off, right? They're not doing you or them a favour. You've got to be really systematic in your approach to fishing, right? So... I've got the line over there so I can't cast any closer to that snag. Right, I'll just bring this in here like this. Right, nice. Rod tip pointing down because it's a fairly light lure. I'm bringing it in on a nice straight line. Okay, there it goes. So now what I do is because I want to fish this whole area, when you're standing here, think this is like a protractor. Right, remember that like little half circle at school? that had the 180 degrees marked on it. That's what you think this is. And every 180 degrees, every degree is another point that you can cast. So there should be about 90 casts in here. Or oh, oh, we'll take, say, uh, 30 of them out because of the obstructions. Take out another 15 because of those obstructions. So we've got about 40 casts left. So if you're fishing this area properly, right, you'd do about 20 or 30 casts just in here, right? so that you could fish that snag totally. You don't know where the fish are on the snag and half the time you've got to put the lure right in front of their face for them to attack it. Right, so we're a little bit further to the right, just letting that sink. Okay, I'm gonna show you a new lure technique next time we do a stream. I'm gonna show you what I call the countdown method, but I need to go to a fast flowing river to just show you the different ways to do it. There we go. Right, so I'm about a, just a little bit to the right of the last cast. Okay, just enjoying the environment, enjoying what we're doing. Okay. Whoops, horrible cast, absolutely horrible cast. Just about fell in the river when I did that one. Nice. Now here. Right, that's just a little bit further to the right than the one I just cast. Excellent. And like I said to you fam, I've never ever caught brim on a spinner like this. Okay, I know people that have caught silver perch on them, but never a black brim. So what I've done is I'm just about you know, five to 10 centimeters to the right of where I just cast last. Okay, bring that in. Nice. Okay, a little bit further to the right. So in this section here, I've already had six casts. Fishing's a little bit like lotto. You don't know when a fish is gonna come on. You never know when you're gonna get your lotto numbers, do you? So you've got to fish and give yourself the best opportunity to, um, you know, if you can take all the, lotto, the numbers in lotto, right, you'll get it every time. And that's what you've got to view like this with your casting. Cast every single square, square centimetre of the water. 
okay and then eventually you'll hopefully put one in front of the fish's nose you know we've got one stretch of river or brook actually at Lafroy brook in Pemberton what you do is you walk upstream you let your line out with a floating lure downstream and you wait till you see a trout in the shallows and then what you do is you turn your bar arm over and you shift your rod tip around so the lure swings in the current and if you can get it to go past the fish's nose it'll hit it that's about the only time that it'll do it you know not yet george doesn't mean i'm not trying though george Okay, so I've just cast a little bit further to the right of where I last cast. And what I'm doing is I'm just working this whole area, fam. You know? That's probably a little bit too far. I should have had another cast in between there, but that's still okay. Beautiful. See, just enjoying the fishing fab. And after a while, when you use your tackle enough, okay and you're using different lures and that sort of stuff you sort of develop a feel for what you're doing you come up to an area and go well i can't really get a crankbait in there but i could probably bow and arrow cast a spinner right so you bow and arrow cast a spinner and you'll catch a fish there that you wouldn't normally catch because you walk past it so whether it's a spinner or a crankbait a soft plastic a surface popper whatever right you just use the different tools okay to help you with your fishing so that you can get a fish you know there we go i've got another 10 casts here fab it might sound stupid but this is just what you know i've developed from experience so in this short area here, we'll have another 10 casts. Watch. If I don't hit another tree. Bugger. This rod, believe it or not, is a bit stiffer than that other one, so. All right, that's two. I just grabbed that just before it hit the water. That's three. And see how I'm retrieving it? Nice, comfortable grip on the fishing rod. Okay, four. And when I say you've got to fish every single square centimetre of the river, you have to fish every single square centimetre of the river, fam. You don't know where the fish are in here. There could be a submerged log over there that you don't know about. Unless you cast a lure over it and get it snagged or hooked, or hook a fish, you won't know. All right. Got about five casts to go in here. And then what we'll do is we'll try a different lure. The other thing is too, if you've got balanced enough fishing equipment, you can cast um, like West Australian pilchards, like a lure. If you do a couple of little things to the rig, I'll show you that in the ocean next time. Good, we're just working our way around. Give that time to hit the bottom. Bring that in.
Beautiful, we're working a little bit further back and to the right now. Lovely night. It's not as cold as previous nights, which is good. Oops. And what we're doing, we're working closer and closer underneath these trees, you know. Still got a bait in the water. It's just one of those nights. It's a bit quiet, you know what I mean? There we go. And what I'm doing, I've probably got another, I would say, four to five casts left. And this is what you do, because you can send 100 people to a fishing spot, and 100 people will fish it 100 different ways. You'll still always have those two or three people that'll outfish the other 97 or 98, purely because they slow it down, right? And they just work every single square centimetre of the spot. Right, that's good. And that's all they do. Most people will come up one or two casts, and then they're off, you know. You might get lucky once in a while, but as a rule of thumb, you know. There we go. The other thing is too, with the, um, the crankbait that we've got, we can cast further, right, and fish deeper spots. I mean, this is pretty good, but if I wanted to fish deeper sections of a river out in the middle, what I'd have to do is put on a slightly bigger lure to get further casting distance, and then that way, you know, it gives me more water to fish, and then that way it doesn't get, like, uh, pushed around in current and that sort of stuff. So... We'll do another short one in here. And then probably the last one here. See, I managed to hook that around. Okay. Right. Now what we'll do, we've tried the spinner there. Right. Running aces, how are you, bud? Good to see you, mate. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're just trying different lures. We've got a bait out. It's a bit quiet tonight, mate, you know? Be quiet. Right, so this crankbait. Okay. Beautiful. Point and shoot, fam. Lovely. Nice. Then what you do, aim for the spot that you've just cast at and try and get a little bit to the right. Okay. Nice. Rod tip down this bait. Uh, this uh, crankbait suspense. And see how we can fish more river here purely because we've got a bigger lure, which means you can cast it further. The other thing is too, you've got to remember, with these crankbaits that float, right? If you've got a stretch of river that's got overhanging branches, and there's a gap between the overhanging branches, and the river's flowing this way, cast upstream, tick your bar arm over and wait, and what you do is you point your rod tip at your floating lure, and then what you can do is you wait for it to go underneath the snags 
but you can't normally cast to, and then you start retrieving, you know? I've caught a lot of really good fish that way, and you don't even cast at it. You just use the water, use the river, use the lures and all that sort of stuff that you've got to your advantage, you know what I mean? Okay, so, notice how I'm pointing the rod tip down at the water? All right. That's because I want this to come in fairly deep. This is a suspending bait. Beautiful, that's not hitting the uh, bottom of the river at that depth with that action. Now that was an absolutely horrible cast because what I've done is I've cast it through the tree there. Right, now see how I'm hanging this here? Let's see if I can get it back. Right, what you do is you wait for the lure to, oh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You wait for the lure to swing towards you and then you drop your rod tip. Ready, come in, good. Nah, bastard. No, nah, nearly, come on. Should be able to get this. This doesn't help. There we go, the tree's claimed one. Now, did that snap the join? Or did that snap the mono? Ooh, that's interesting. But that's fishing, famo. Hey, I wonder if it snapped. Hang on, come on, buddy. Oh, that's good. So, we must be doing our joins right, because the monofilament join stayed, right? It snapped at the snap swivel. That's good. That's what you want it to do. Okay, because to go through this, that's good. That shows that we're doing our knots properly, see? All right, that's still perfect. Agent Cal Gibbs, how are you, mate? I just lost a lure in a tree, mate. Oh, no. Braid picks up everything. They're like soft compound Michelin tyres. Right, they'll pick up every single snag on the road, you know what I mean? All right. So what we're going to do now is... Let's just bring this through. Okay. Now, what I might do is I might put out the big bait, fam. Just in case something big is a bit out there, that's why these fish aren't biting. Mind you, I've just seen a couple more swirls in there. What's going on? What's going on? Let's see if it's back at this snag. Lovely cast. I didn't even need to hit the bar arm on that one because I knew that it was going to fold over properly. Right. What we might do is let's just uh, let's just uh... oh it is running aces. It is mate. Nice part of the world. What happened was running aces is I went and approached a uh, private landowner if I could fish his farm obviously there's no public access here so the good thing about that is we've got the spot to ourselves. and sure enough this is the first day that we haven't had a bite or hook to fish but you know we've still got about an hour of daylight I'm going to still do a nice long range presentation over there there has been a good fish underneath this snag the last three days so we've got the jig rod there got the fluorocarbon there let's just uh you know Leave that and see what happens. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a bit of muley right on the Calcutta 700 and cast it out in the middle and see if we can get ourselves a little mull away or something. Right. 
There we go. And if Christopher Koenig is watching, thanks mate. That was really good of you to share your knowledge the other day that you used this same rig to catch pike in Germany, you know? And what I'll do, Famo, Hans, how are you, buddy? Yeah, I've quit on Twitch, mate, about three months ago. So I left the platform, and now we're just concentrating on YouTube, bud. Oh, hang on, let me just stop this. From... Sorry I didn't stream earlier today, fam. I couldn't get on YouTube, believe it or not. Right. 48, bring that in there. Thanks, people. 17 viewers. Really good of you to give up your time to come in and watch, okay? And if you're going through COVID, our hearts go out to you. We hope that you're coping okay. Oh, this is about as Australian as it gets, fam. Sitting by a river, couple of baits out, hearing the highway off in the distance, and just chilling out, you know? This is what we're doing. So... Just waiting for a bite from the brim. So, a nice, cheap, friendly way to just chill out, you know what I mean? Hands, if you're new, mate, to YouTube, I'd appreciate a subscription for free, mate. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe on YouTube, right? And if anybody has got any questions they'd like to ask, just ask away. Um, we're going to do some camping streams. We're going to do some campfire cooking streams, fam. Right. And uh, they're not too far away. Oh, it's just nice to be able to relax, you know. You work eight hours a day trying to get things done and then you know where there's noise it's a bit hard to relax you come down to the river beautiful clean air you've got a chance of catching a fish you know what i mean you've seen a few different soft plastic techniques which will hopefully help you in your fishing later and stick around on youtube fam i've got content that is worthy of youtube and worthy of the of the community all you've got to do is just turn your screen on and watch okay Oh, sugar, hang on. Let's chuck that in there. Did we get a bite? You cheeky bugger. Did we get a bite? No, we got a stick, I think, did we? No, we got one, did we? No, what's this? Oh, we caught a turtle! This is a Western Australian long neck turtle. No wonder there's no fish around, fam. These things are nasty. Hang on, hang on. We caught a long neck turtle. That's a rarity, isn't it? Now, don't get your fingers near these, right? Because they stink and they're nasty and they bite you, right? Oh, it stinks. Oh, it stinks. 
these are horrible things. Oh, yeah. Now, I've got to be careful. That's why there's no brim around, because we've got turtles in here. Right. This is as big as they get over here. So, what I'm going to do, little fella, is I'm going to let you go, right, and you're not going to take a bite out of me. That's why we've got this. Come on. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> they smell terrible. Come on. And don't worry, they can live out of water. There you go, mate. Off you go. Oh, they stink. Oh, they absolutely stink. Obviously, I was bigger than him, so that's why he shot off. <laughs> that's as big as they get here. Your turtles in America would use these turtles as helmets on bicycles. Right. Now, that must be fairly fresh water in there for those turtles to take a bait, fam. Right. There you go. That's why there's no brim here, fam. Because they like taking chunks out of brim, I'm telling you. So what happened is... Oh, that stinks. I just saw the rod move a little bit and I went, hang on a minute, that doesn't feel like a brim. And sure enough, we're going to have to try a different spot because once the turtles come in, they take chunks out of brim all the time. Right. Oh dear. I've actually caught turtles on spinners in freshwater for, for trout and reddies. They're horrible. You think it's the fish of a lifetime and this stinking turtle sticks its head up. That's better. Now we're talking. That's right, Sith. Oh, really? Well, that's a mature one here, mate. That's a mature one. Now, I don't think we're going to catch any brim today, fam, because we've caught one of those buggers. But anyway, you never know. Stranger things have happened. Ah. Sir Drinkwater, how are you, bud? Welcome to the stream. Bloody lovely, isn't it? You know, that a lovely sunset. Can't beat an Australian sunset, fam. Of course, I'm biased. If you were up north, you wouldn't be this close to a river because you'd end up getting called stumpy from the crocodiles. But luckily, we're down in the south of the state and uh, all good, you know. How are you, sir, drink water? Oh, I'm spewing now. Oh, the blowflies are out. <laughs> yeah, I'm being biased, mate. I'm an Aussie. You know, we've got to have something. You know what I mean? Everything's bigger and better in Texas, remember? mind flies oh you've been up all night mate is everything all right you're not feeling well or vault how are you mate <laughs> Pretty quiet, mate. We just got a turtle. That's why there's no fish there. And there's probably no fish over there because of the turtles. We're going to have to find another spot there, mate. So if the fresh water's this far down, we're going to have to go downstream, I think. <laughs> oh, okay, mate.
No, no, just the West Australian freshwater turtle. Or tortoise. No, long neck turtle, I think. Yeah, not like Fraser Vault. That was embarrassing. I hooked a turtle at Fraser. My God. Mr. I care for the environment. And if you're new to the stream, fam, okay, and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was strange. That's why those two streams didn't work, because they weren't able to get on. Right, let's go here. Let's go. And thank you very much for the support, fam. 20 people watching, that's really good of you. Now, the water started moving in the middle, okay? I don't know whether you can see that, um, but it's starting to flow towards the ocean. Yeah. But these ones can live on land too, mate, but they do spend most of their time in the water. Excuse me for a second. Absolutely magic setting. Can you hear all the birds in the background, fam? I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring the um, tripod down here. We've got an absolutely picturesque... You've got to see this, famo. All right, you have to see this. Okay? You've got to see this with the little, um, little tripod. Check this out. All right, just down through here, what we've got is we've got the reflection from the sun. All right? Oh, God, another, another cow pat. All right, here's me. Great. So there we go. Just look in there. All the little back swimmers all above the water there. Check it out. Hey, we'll get that glare from the sun out. There you go. See a little uh, little back swimmers just swimming along there, and see how the water in the middle is starting to flow towards the ocean. That means we're starting to head towards a low tide. Okay. So my next cast is probably going to be. A little bit further over to the right because you've got to remember too fam right when you're fishing okay where your sinker sits is not where is not where the bait sits right if your sinker sits here and the water's flowing that way your sinker will, sorry your bait will turn and just move in the current if the water's flowing this way, your sinker will sit here and your bait will flow with the water current. So that's why I always tell you to grab your spool when you've got your sinker between you and the bait. Because if you have the bait between you and the sinker when it lands, it'll just tangle up around your main line, you know? Just little one percenters that make all the difference with your fishing, if you know what I mean. Alrighty?
That little creek across there stopped flowing as well, so. Thanks people, 20 people watching, that's awesome. Thanks for coming across, okay? And like I said, tell everyone about the stream fam, the more the merrier, you know? And don't worry, we're not gonna lose touch with any of the community once we get busier, you know what I'm saying? What's that, Sith? Oh, the tor turtles? You're allowed to hunt. Is there anything you can't hunt in America? Mm. Oh, Canadian geese. Yeah, sorry you said that yesterday. Well, I didn't read that in the chat. I'm very sorry about that, Sith. Yeah, it doesn't do anything between relations between America and Canada, does it? <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, be careful, Vult. We don't want any of that talk in the chat. No disrespect intended to anyone, but no politics in the chat, okay? We'll leave that right alone. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right, because they also, they're one of the few that, that's right, geese and swans are one of the few that will belt around at night, aren't they? You hear them overhead as a safety measure.
clovers. Not that I'm aware of, but I'll have a, I'll have a look. And loud, oh great, just what you need, just like na some neighbours, eh? Nope, that's my camouflage crocs. I don't want to lose them because I never find them again. Yeah, I very rarely catch fish in the same area I catch turtles, fam. If this was high tide, it'd be much saltier water. But we will probably come back tomorrow morning, fam, because I don't know about you guys, I'm very competitive, and if a brim beats me like that one did, ah, oh, the pain, you know? Oh, the pain. Ah. Oh, really? No, we don't have anything like that over here, mate, that I know of. Really? Don't they have any natural predators on the ground? Vault, where are you again? Which state? Oh, bugger Sith. All right, famo, keep an eye on this rod for me. I'm just gonna start packing up, all right? It's a very, very quiet day. We haven't had a bite. We might fluke one late, but I doubt it. As soon as I saw that turtle, yes. Turtle, turtle. It's not looking good, you know. I'll put a new leader on that tomorrow, I think. Put a new section of um, fluorocarbon on it. And unfortunately, fam, most of my big brim have all been at night. So, you know, we'll try and get the generator. Cro oh, that really hurt. The old Crocs need a bit of a tyre rubber on the bottom, I think. Ah. <sighs> This is the first time we haven't had a bite from a fish since we've been fishing this spot, which is a bit of a shock. Tell you what, I'm loving this Calcutta. This is a beautiful reel, fam. Why is the oil coming out of it, though? It's a bit of a surprise, might you know. This is a lovely reel. That is an amazing piece of machinery. The fact that they could do that in a reel, unbelievable. The go same goes for the Qualia reels, too, fam. Those boat reels, for what you get, are so cheap. If it was another brand, it'd be three times the price, you know? Right.
Well, famo, I think that's about all the shit I thought. Oh God, knock this cow pad again. Actually, I won't be able to stream tomorrow morning because I've got to get the car taken in to get halogen globes on it. So, it might be in the afternoon, I think. All right, famo. You're welcome, Vault. Queensland, oh, that's right. Yes, Stinky, we survived the Friday the 13th storm on Fraser, you know. Now, everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Sorry we couldn't get a brim, but that's fishing. Stay safe, stay well, be the best person you can be. Catch you tomorrow.